So I'll be the first person to admit that I do not like changes, especially when it comes to anything camera related, like my editing workflow or my camera settings or my picture profile or whatever it might be. If you've been watching my videos, you probably know that my process has been more or less the same since the beginning of my channel. So when this company Loop Deck reached out and they said, hey, we have this new editing console for Premiere Pro that we think will speed up your editing workflow and improve your color grading process, I was kind of like, yeah, right. You know, that, that's not gonna happen. I edit videos every single week. Pretty sure I have it dialed. Well, I was totally wrong. And this thing has absolutely changed the way that I edit my videos. And also, I swear my last two videos have gotten more compliments on the color grade than any of my previous videos. Seriously, go watch one of my last two videos. The color grading is on point. Now, I'm not saying this thing's gonna make you guys amazing colorists but I do think it will help. So today I wanted to walk you guys through my new Premiere Pro editing workflow, as well as my new color grading workflow and give you guys some tips and tricks and different things that you can do with the Loop Deck Plus that I think made my color grades look a whole lot better. So that's what we're gonna do today, but also they sent me a second one. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to give it away, but I'm gonna be giving this thing away at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, let's jump into Premiere Pro and check it out. All right guys, so welcome back to my Premiere Pro and welcome to my little loop deck overhead rig here. Now, before we actually talk about my Premiere Pro workflow and my color grading and all that, I wanted to just quickly give you guys a little bit of advice on the loop deck plus. Now, when you first get this thing, it's a little intimidating. There's a lot of knobs and wheels and buttons and everything. And I would say the best thing that you can do is just straight away, just start customizing your loop deck plus. So open up the loop deck software and start putting in your keyboard shortcuts and your actions and everything that you like to use for your workflow. Now, customizing it is super easy. You just click on whatever key you wanna customize and then you have a huge list here of pretty much every single action that you could ever want for all of your applications, not just Premiere Pro. You have After Effects, Audition, Lightroom, Photoshop, and Final Cut Pro, all that different stuff. You can customize it for every single application. And then once you've done that, you can actually start editing. Now you can see here on my screen, I like to actually use what they call pancake timelines, which basically means I like to put all of my footage down here on the bottom timeline and then I actually do my edit on the timeline above it. It just makes the whole workflow a little bit easier. I can grab my clips, put them in my timeline and get to editing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to my project panel here. I'm gonna push this P6 key, which I have set to select all. And then I'm gonna drag all of my clips down into this bottom timeline here. And now this will pretty much be the timeline where I keep all of my selects and all of the good clips that I plan on using in my edit. So with the Loop Deck Plus, I can actually go through and cut up and choose all my selects selects and delete all the clips and everything without ever really touching the mouse, which is really nice. So I actually have this D2 knob here set up to scroll through my timeline. You can see if I twist it, it basically just goes like five frames at a time and scrolls through all of my clips. Then I have this C1 button to cut off the beginning of the clip and the C2 button to cut off the end of the clip. So let me kind of show you guys how that works. What I do is I scroll through here with this D2, I find out where I want my clip to start and I push this C1 button. Then I'll continue scrolling through and I'll find out where I want the clip to end and I'll push C2. So now it cut off the beginning of the clip and the end of the clip that I know I'm not going to use. And I have just the selected clip ready to go for my edit. So I'll do the same thing. This clip is actually pretty much the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my ripple delete key here, which is this purple tab key to actually just get rid of that clip and close that gap as well. So moving on to our next clip here, I'm just gonna scroll through with this D2. I'm gonna find out where I want this clip to start, which is gonna be right about there. I'll click C1, I'll find out where I want it to end and I'll click C2. Now I do this for all of my edits. I go through every single clip one by one, cutting off the beginning, cutting off the end and making sure I'm only keeping the good parts. Now the reason I do this is because number one, it lets me see all of my footage. That way I have a good idea of what clips are good and what clips are not good. And it just makes my editing process a little bit easier by reviewing all the clips. And number two, it just keeps me organized and lets me edit super quickly with the Loop Deck Plus. So let me show you guys kind of real time what this looks like here. So I'm gonna scroll through. I want it to start there and end there. Next clip, I'm gonna scroll through. I want it to start there and end there. Next clip, scroll through. I want it to start here and end here, boom. So I'm just gonna do this for every single clip. Start here and end here. 
Just like that, I just go through and I cut out all of my selects. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up choosing my selects and then we'll be right back. So now let's actually talk about taking these clips from the bottom timeline and putting them in the top timeline so that we can actually start the editing process. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come to my first timeline, make sure I'm at the beginning, and then I'm going to go ahead and find my first clip. So I already know that I wanna go ahead and start with this clip here. Now, this is probably gonna blow your mind, but check this out. I find the clip that I wanna use, I click copy, I click this green button here, here, which I have set to switch timelines and then I click paste and boom it puts that clip right into my timeline right into my edit and it's ready to go so then what I'll do is I'll use my control dial here to go back to the beginning then I'm gonna actually play this clip listening to the music so that I can find out where I want my next cut to be so let's go ahead and play through So there's a clap beat right here where I want my next clip to come in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that C2 button to cut off the end of the clip. And now I have a perfect cut on the beat that's ready for my next clip. So I'm gonna push the green button again to switch back to my selects timeline, use the control dial to find the next clip that I wanna use. Let's say I wanna use this clip. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna switch timelines again, and I'm going to paste it. Then I'll go back to the beginning, listening to the music again to find out where I want that next clip to cut. So Let's play through. And again, there's a clap right here. So I'm gonna cut off the end of the clip and now I'm ready for my next clip. So that's pretty much how I'm editing my videos using the Loop Deck Plus. I basically just come down to my selects timeline, find the clip that I wanna use, I copy it, I switch timelines, I paste it. Then I switch back, find the next clip that I wanna use. Let's say it's this clip, I copy it, I switch timelines and I paste it. Super easy, all while making sure I go through and sync up the cuts to the beat of the music. But it's a pretty easy process. I just listen to the music, find where I wanna cut. So right there, I have a nice clap. I'm going to extend that clip so that it's on the clap, and then I can go in and find my next clip. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you guys with editing is let's say I want this clip to start at a different time. Say I don't want it to start right here. I actually have this D1 key set to where I can scroll and actually change where the clip starts. So basically, if I just turn this, you can see my clip is changing, but it's not actually changing the length of my clip, which you can see here. It's literally just repositioning that clip. So say I want it to start right here, boom, all I do is turn the knob, and now my clip starts right there. If I play through, you can see. And boom, so yeah, you can go ahead and just change the position of all of your clips and make them fit to where you want them to fit super easy just by turning this D1 knob. So that's pretty much the basics of how I'm culling my footage and choosing my selects and then moving those selects to my main editing timeline and matching them up to the beat of the music. It's all super easy. You probably saw I never even touched my mouse. I can just do everything pretty much on this left side and with this D2 dial here. But now I wanna talk about probably my favorite part of the Loop Deck Plus, and that is the color grading workflow. So as you guys know, I like to color grade all of my footage using my own personal LUTs. And with the Loop Deck, I can actually set those to a preset. So I have this P4 preset right here set to automatically add my favorite LUT. If I undo that, you can see if I push P4, it automatically adds my LUT and I didn't have to go to the drop down menus or anything like that. Then I can use all of these knobs and the wheels to actually color grade my footage. So let's say I wanna bring my exposure down. I wanna add some saturation, some vibrance, and then add some contrast with the shadows knob and the blacks knob, maybe bring these highlights down and bring these whites up, something like that is looking a whole lot better. So if I click on my Lumetri color panel here, I can show you the before and the after. Pretty sweet, right? Super easy to color grade. You just do everything with the knobs and you can see that it does change your sliders here in the Lumetri color panel. But probably the biggest game changer for me and what made the biggest improvement in my color grading process is this full screen mode here. If you push the screen mode key in the top right, you can actually color grade your footage in full screen, which I think it's just a huge game changer. It lets you see all of your colors in full screen and all of your details and your contrast. And just being able to color grade your footage on a full screen like this instead of this little tiny small screen has just really improved my color grades and I think people have actually noticed. So let me kind of show you guys how this full screen workflow works here. So I'm gonna go over to a different clip. Let's say we just wanna color grade this clip. I'm gonna push P4 again to add my LUT. And then I'm just gonna use the knobs and the wheels to color grade my footage. And I don't ever have to look at the Lumetri color panel. I'm just gonna bring the exposure down, shadows down quite a bit, blacks down quite a bit, maybe whites up a little and highlights down. 
add some saturation, add some vibrance, and I have a pretty good looking clip that I didn't have to use the mouse for and I could color grade in totally full screen. Now, one last thing that I wanted to point out with the color grading workflow is the fact that you can still manipulate your highlights, midtones, and shadows and change their individual colors. Now to do that, you're actually gonna use these three buttons here. We have highlights, midtones, and shadows, even though I know it says hue, saturation, and luminance. For Premiere Pro's sake, it's highlights, midtones, and shadows. So let's say I wanna warm up the midtones of this clip a little bit. I'm gonna click the midtones button, and then I'll use these two wheels to change the colors, and this third wheel to change the luminance value of my midtones. So let's say I wanna add a little bit of warmth. I'm gonna go up here and up here, and then we'll bring it over to kind of more of the warmish green look there. So something like that. And then I can actually make them a little bit darker by pulling this wheel down here. So you can see if I make it super dramatic, you can change the colors of your midtones, highlights, and shadows by using these wheels and these buttons here, which I think is super nice. Now, if you wanna reset something, the loop deck makes it super easy. You just click the knobs down and it will reset them back to the defaults. Same goes for all of these knobs here. But yeah, that's pretty much my workflow for how I'm using the loop deck plus, both for editing and for color grading, personally, I think it's a total game changer. I am going to use it, and you guys will probably be seeing this thing in some of my other videos here in the future. So there you go. That's my new editing and color grading workflow utilizing the Loop Deck Plus. Now for me, probably the biggest game changer was that full screen editing mode where you can cut all of your footage and see all the details in full screen, but also you can color grade all of your footage in full screen. And I think that's been the biggest change for me. And the reason why everybody thinks my color looks a whole lot better is because now I'm actually color grading on the entire monitor and not just on like a little tiny window on the screen. Plus having all the little knobs and stuff for the fine adjustments is just, just makes the whole process a whole lot easier. So yeah, the Loop Deck Plus, I really like it. And one of you guys are going to win one. Now, all you have to do to enter the giveaway is follow me on Instagram at CodyBlue underscore and leave a comment on this photo. Then I'll just use a random number generator to select a comment and that person will win their own Loop Deck Plus. But otherwise, that's pretty much all I had for you guys today. So do me a favor, like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and if you have any questions, send those to me on Instagram as well. So follow, leave a comment, send me any of your questions, and I'll try my best to answer every single one of them. But until next time, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.